What's up guys, I'm Zach, this is the SLZ Uncut channel, and today we will be showing you how to second gen intercooler and radiator swap your first gen. Um, what we've started to do here is, the guy we had bought this stuff from just sold us the entire intercooler and radiator with the core support, because it's easier for you to part a truck out that way. So we have the intercooler, the radiator, the coolant bottle, the shroud, the uh, washer fluid. We've started taking the bolts out uh, to separate the intercooler and the radiator and get this core support apart. Start taking measurements on the front end here. What I did measure is um, the factory inter the factory radiator is actually uh, 31 inches long and the updated second gym one is 41 so it's like five and a quarter inches on each side. We will be having to make some custom brackets up here and we'll have to cut these off, make brackets up here. So, so I set up a little comparison. Here's the radiator on the first gen, or second gen I mean. And that's the first gen. Look at the width difference. And they're the same height. First gen intercooler, second gen intercooler. Big difference. Look at the inlet on that, and then the inlet on this. It's like way bigger. That's what she said! <laughs> Okay, so here's our holes. We're going to clean them up, obviously, so nothing to worry about. But pretty much we cut up, I want to say, nine and a quarter inches from this bottom brace up. And the hole is honestly kind of bigger than what it needs to be. I've made it that way so that way if I'm going to make support brackets and stuff but let me see here. Yeah nine and a quarter inches. So nine and a quarter inches tall is how high I cut it up. It really doesn't need to be that tall. You could probably bring it down like two or three more inches so and then we cut it over I want to say it was 25 inches off center. 25 and a quarter if you measure from this side of the bracket. So 25 and a quarter over is cut what we did for the bottom is we just followed this line right here and just cut across it and then you have to cut these support brackets off in the bottom obviously this support has to come out and just the same thing over here over here you'll probably hit the battery tray so I just dropped it down like an inch so this side's like a, a little like an inch lower but the intercooler fits in there so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna fit it back up in there again and mark where these need to be and maybe try to self tap them in or tack them up and then see what we have to do from there and then as far as holding the intercooler in we're going to get a piece of all thread drill a th hole through here put a nut on each side of it with washers and a rubber bushing it'll attach to the intercooler out here with all thread we got the intercooler in there this is how far we've gotten with the I noticed that there's a lip right here for where the radiator is and I'm thinking I'm gonna have to cut that too to make the other the second gen radiator fit in here which I don't know if that's probably a good idea so I, I don't know well maybe we have some room to move it back I don't know but I guess we'll cross that when we get there I think we're gonna try to um, get the mounts set up now we self tapered this in so that way we could fit the intercooler and check and see like everything fit up and they're self tapered in on both sides it's in the right spot uh, we just have to trim we have to I'm gonna cut this completely out because we don't need it you will see up here though that the hood latch does bolt to that so you just have to cut it even here I'm assuming and then if I need to I'll just tack weld here I'm gonna cut that completely out uh, and then maybe make my own L brackets down here if I need to uh, to support that and then once we cut that out figure out where it sits I'm gonna chop these off and tack weld these on um, and then move on to the radiator portion <laughs> So what we are doing now is we, I got this piece of PVC, um, it's not 3 inch, but uh, this is the scrap piece that I had, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to use this to figure out the angle we need to make the intercooler piping connect. I'm thinking it's pretty much going to come straight off of here and then 45 and then return and uh, should hit about dead center with this. We'll have a little bit of flexibility with like a uh, boot, but other than that, and I'm thinking maybe trying to clock this at a different uh, angle, that might help. So we're gonna maybe loosen those up and then cut this down a little shorter and see what we can work with. Okay, so it turns out that um, I clocked this a little bit and with it clocked, it looks like if I just cut this down a little, looks like if I clock this down or up a little right here this literally would go right to it um, sure the boot has to be a little forgiving as you can see it's gonna have to move a little bit but that's literally as much as it have to move so I'm thinking all I gotta do is cut this back maybe three or four inches and then re-tack it we would just have to have a decently long boot here for like flexibility this side over here is definitely gonna be the tricky one just because of the battery tray. So I'm wondering if there's a way we can move the battery as far over here as we can. And then um, I think if we can move the battery over farther, we'd definitely be fine over here. We would just probably have to cut and maybe angle this more or just have more of an angle here on the boot. But it's like pretty freaking close. Okay, so it looks like we got the battery tray out of here. I think what we're going to, because I didn't even realize, like, look at the ru the surface rust that was underneath that battery tray. I could never get it out before, so I kind of always left it in when I cleaned up everything, because I didn't realize there was two bolts underneath. It looks like just bending this, we hit where we need to. So this will probably just have to be cut shortened a little bit, and we'll have to order the right. I just measured it. We'll have to get two, three to three and a half inch, 45 degree elbow um, intercooler boots. And if anything, we might have to cut this up a little higher or something. But for the most part, it looks like it hits pretty much dead on. Just sliding it over. And then the battery, I actually, I don't think I'm going to put that battery tray back in here. I think I'm going to probably like make my own framed up battery tray. And probably mount it like over here. I don't know if it will be too tall though, so that's something I'd have to take into consideration. And then this side pretty much got to match up. So this, we just got to order our... A 45 degree boot that should match up just fine so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to take the intercooler out and clean up everything up front here and probably tack weld in these uh, the uh, brackets <laughs> Everything cut off the front here and everything cleaned up. Uh, we're gonna get ready to tack weld. We got these like sitting flush and and nice. I made sure I hammered them down like everything's touching. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a bead across here, across here, across here, and then right here and here. I think that would be plenty. The same thing over here, bead here, 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 and then we'll take the self tap wrap and fill in that hole. And then uh, after that we'll hit everything with some primer. Okay, so as you guys see, we got the radiator out. Um, we got all of the stuff inside of here cut out. Let's see if I can... You can see all the uh, bracketry behind here is out of the way. Um, we cut off these brackets that bumped out right here and put the radiator in there and it does fit right now we are making a uh, mount for it to drop into this is actually this is um, the piece that there's like a, another four inches that's supposed to go here but it's the piece that mounts to the uh, stock radiator on the you know, first gens it goes across to these right here so what I did was I cut this down and then I had some scrap metal laying around. 
we're going to use this and it's going to go like that and it's gonna uh, that's what's gonna the radiator is gonna sit on um the second gen radiators i think are actually shorter than the first gen ones as far as height goes yeah so they're a tad bit shorter um so we got to bring it up a little higher so that way you can keep the uh radiator hose away from the intercooler piping on the uh passenger side so that's what we're getting ready to attack this up now after we get the welding wire set up on the welder and because we ran and got wire and then after we do that we're going to weld these in permanently and i think we're it's only eight o'clock and i plan on staying out here pretty late so we're actually in pretty good shape as far as getting things done the radiator is a tight fit i'm not going to lie but the shroud and the coolant bottle and stuff does fit so that's good news um, pretty much after we get this stuff done, we just have to figure out the battery situation and the intercooler piping and then we're done with that whole conversion. So, Okay, so we have our brackets made up for the radiator. Uh, we just cut a piece of, I want to say, I'm not sure the thickness, but uh, I just had some scrap stuff so I just made it pretty much to the width of this that I cut down. And I made them about two and a quarter inches tall and they overlap with this so I would say they're probably about two inches is being utilized and this gets it high enough uh, for the radiator to sit where it needs to and then already grinded where it needs to be uh, welded out right there I think it was a uh, two and a quarter inches from this piece right here over and then an inch back so um, and then we did get our uh, brackets, intercooler brackets welded on. So next we're just gonna weld those radiator brackets. Okay, so we have every everything is in permanently. Uh, the radiators in, intercoolers in, and tightened up. I'm not sure if we have to adjust that yet or not. But um, so pretty much to mount this, what we did was we took that same uh, steel that we used for the brackets for the radiator um we use that and kind of attached it to the front of this right now it's just self tapped in i'm not sure if i'll bolt it in or just leave it self tapped in but uh self tapped in right here and then drilled a hole through this and got took the same all thread we used on the intercooler and ran it through here and bolted it so it's bolted on the back side and the front side and the reason why i decided to use this steel was because it has a little bit of give to it so the it won't be so stiff that the vibration will um kind of like make noise i guess so it has a little bit of uh play to it and so that's what we did on both sides of this intercoolers tightened up and in we're going to throw the shroud on real quick so you guys can see the shroud in there and uh tighten up the shroud and make sure that this fan blade doesn't hit the shroud and uh if so obviously we'll have to cut some stuff but the upper radiator hose does not reach I don't know if getting a second gen one will fix that as you can tell it hits right here so it's about a good six to seven inches off um, if we have to we'll just get a hose and run a different hose and then here in a second I'm going to test and see if the bottom hose fits or not and if that doesn't fit um, We'll just have to get second gen hoses, I'm, I'm assuming. I don't know, I'll have to see what some people, not a lot of people do this conversion, so there's not much you can really find. But we're gonna throw everything in there. Okay, got the shroud in, Click, kinda cleaned everything up. Um, the, sh the fan does hit the shroud over on the left hand side because this radiator is kind of pushed to this side a little more, same with the intercooler, just because that's the way it had to go. We're just gonna trim that to make that work but yeah guys it turned out really really good um everything fits well actually the only thing is i think you have to trim this um i th think most people just end up cutting it here and cutting it there and then leaving the intercooler hanging out of the bottom i'm honestly not i'm not going to go over that in this video i will be doing an update video though like once the truck is running kind of give my opinion on how be how much better the truck operates um, I'm assuming it'll help keep it cooler because that's an all aluminum radiator 
and it's way bigger than the first gen one so definitely and i was reading something about it being a dual flow system or something like that um but obviously yeah we're going to clean up the intercooler more uh and paint up all of our brackets and stuff so they don't rust so all this will get tore back out and then obviously we got to mess with the um fan shroud but uh, we'll do an update video once we get the intercooler piping ran and our hoses ran But hopefully I explained everything well to you guys um, I'm gonna try to make sure that all the measurements are available. Maybe put them in the description as well uh, for each um, Piece that we made although it should be pretty self-explanatory uh, the other thing is I'm wondering if the grill is going to hit that. I'm, I'm almost positive it probably will. So we'll probably have to trim that on the grill. But it should be good to go. But yeah, guys, like I said, this is Zach on the SLZ Uncut channel. Um, if you guys are new, like and comment below what you guys thought, uh, what I could improve on with the video. And uh, let me know if you guys have any questions um, because I'm sure it's... Even though I pretty much went through all the steps, there are going to be things that you guys run across and you're like, what the heck? So feel free to comment below or whatever. Um, follow me on uh, social media at SLZ Uncut. That's, you'll see a lot of little updates that I won't post on here because um, we will be doing, we are doing a 47RE swap uh, with the Anteater standalone. So look forward to that. And probably next winter we'll be doing a P-Pump swap. So, um, yeah, guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you guys liked what you saw. And also, let me know what you guys think of this camera. Um, I got a whole vlogging set up for a GoPro session and decided to give it a try because I can actually put attachments on it like a light and an external mic. That's why the audio is way better than normal. Um, so comment below what you guys think of the new camera. Um, it actually records in 1080p, but I think that the image looks kind of cloudy compared to the camera I normally uh, record on. But uh, yeah, guys, just comment below, and I appreciate you guys watching. See you guys later.